Good morning. We want to thank everyone for coming out this morning uh, to worship with us. Uh, so thankful that we're able to be here together to do so, and we are thankful for our visitors. We hope that you'll fill out one of the cards on the back of the pew. You can either put it in the collection plate when it comes around or either send it to the outside aisle. Uh, and we hope that you'll come back and worship with us every chance you get and get to know us, stay and get to know us so we can get to know you. A uh, few announcements right quick. Uh, one is uh, if you got any noise making devices, cell phones or whatever, if you will, please put them on silent during this time so we won't be disturbed during worship service. And also, if anyone is in need of a nursery, you can go out in the foyer and there'll be somebody out there that can assist you with that. A few announcements right quick. Again, we, we've mentioned this before. Always check your bulletin because a lot of things we're not going to repeat. So check your bulletin each week. Uh, for announcements. Congratulations to Scott and Heather Morris on the birth of their sons, Cooper Scott Morris and James Watt Morris. Cooper Scott weighs five pounds, eight ounces, and a 19 and a half inches long, and James Watt is five pounds, 15 ounces, and 18 inches long. And so both babies are happy. Heather's doing good. And so we're very uh, happy for that. And, and they want to thank all of us for the prayers and the words of encouragement, no, no visitors at this time. And also congratulate Jeff and Tracy Morris of having two more grandchildren and Ricky and Elizabeth Teasley. And of course, Zach is uh, now a uh, big brother of two, two young brothers. Uh, also, Virginia and Terrell Morris will congratulate them and let them know uh, as great grandparents. Um, Jill gave me this, please keep boy Chase in your prayers as he awaits the, the results of some health uh, health tests that happened that he took. So this was uh, keep him in our prayers and that family. And also uh, Bradley Maglone is Bobby's nephew and in, in need of prayers. Bob, Bobby uh, Brady, I'm sorry, was run over by a tow motor at work and has already had three surgeries. So that got to be very, very uh, painful. Uh, it's good to see Joy this morning and Suzanne. Uh, we're glad uh, that, that she's doing better, and, and Joey's going to find out more Tuesday when he goes to the doctor, so keep, keep them in our prayers. Okay, if you will, uh, bow with me, and we'll go ahead and get started. Our dear and loving Heavenly Father, we do come before you at this time thanking you so very much for each one of us, Father, and for the opportunity that we have to, to be able to approach your throne and worship and praise your holy name, Father. And we, we pray as we always do, Father, that everything that we do is done in accordance with your will, Father, and that we all worship you with, in truth and in spirit, Father so that our worship service is pleasing to you, Father. We're so grateful for us being able to be here, to have the ability to do so. We, we're thankful for our visitors, Father, and we just pray for their safety on their way home and that they'll come back and worship with us, Father. Thank you again for Jesus and for the willingness that he had and your willingness to send him here to, to, to come and to live that perfect life for us, Father, and to, to make the perfect sacrifice that he was only only one that was able to do so and so that we can have a hope with you in heaven one day we pray and thank you for the holy spirit father and all the different ways that he works through your word and in our lives father and we just are grateful for him and for you father and for the love that y'all have for us we thankful for all the physical blessings that you give us father each and every day help us to never take those for granted and to always be mindful of all the things that we have that comes from you, Father. But we're all most grateful, again, Father, for the, the spiritual things that you give us and bless us with and the avenue of prayer and having a relationship with you and being able to worship you and be, be able to be a part of your family, Father. Father, we do pray for <clears throat> Boy Chase, Father, and we pray that he'll have good test results to come from that, be with those who are looking after him, Father, be with Bradley Maglone and be with him, Father, and we pray that those surgeries will be successful and that, and that he'll have a, a speedy recovery from that, Father. We pray, Father, for Joy Jameson and that the doctors that are attending to him and looking after him, Father, to be able to help him. And we just pray for his 
vision to get back normal, Father. And we pray for Teresa, Father, and I'm so thankful that she's doing better, and we just pray that uh, she'll continue to get better each and every day and be with her and Gary, Father, and, and, and we pray to help them. We pray, Father, for Sarah Broom, and we pray, Father, that uh, the doctors who are attending to her will be able to remove the cancer, and she will be cancer-free, Father, and we pray that for the family, as they go through this with her, Father, to give them comfort and peace. Father, we pray that you'll be with each one of us as we continue to travel through life and, and be with uh, all of our brothers and sisters all over the world, Father. Be with all those who are traveling, and we, we pray, Father, that you will forgive us of the things that we do wrong and help us to realize the things that we need to do right, Father, and, and do them. We pray, that, Father, again, that we will be faithful and serve you and please you with our lives, Father, to be with you one day in heaven. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Our opening song this morning will be number 732. 732 in the song. We'll sing the first and third verse. If you would, please stand. <clears throat>
chapter 12, verses 8 through 16. Or he that exhorted on exhortation, he that give it, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kind, affectionate one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, free fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, 
continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but condense to men of lower state. Be not wise in your own conceits. Will you bow with me? Dear Heavenly Father, you are an omnipresent God. You are a God that can be everywhere at once. Dear Heavenly Fathers, we prepare to our hearts and mind to worship you. We pray that you forgive us for any sins that we may have committed that can hinder our worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your son and the sacrifice that he made. And we thank you for all the blessings and our health and strength that we have that enabled us to come out today. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to pray for those that are sick. We know, Father, that as we age, some sickness is to be expected. But I would just like to say a special uh, blessing upon our minister, Brother Gary and his wife. Uh, it seemed like as long as they've been here, she's always had some kind of problem, but I've never heard her complain once. So I'd just like to thank them for the example they have set before this congregation. And I'd like to pray for all of those that have been sick. Uh, Brother Chris come to mind with his seizures. I know he had been here. I pray that uh, he keep the faith. And I pray that we reach out to them. I know that sometimes we are slacking some things that we should do. But I pray that all these people that are sick, that they continue to be encouraged. And we want to pray for those that, I guess I can say, COVID casualties that hadn't came back. I pray that they realize that it's not too late, that they can still come back, and that we are waiting with open arms. And dear Heavenly Father, I pray for our leadership here. I pray that these men continue to do a good job and that they continue to be encouraged and have the strength to make these hard decisions that they have to make sometimes and that we may support them in whatever they may do that's within line of the scriptures. And we thank you for our deacons as they labor here. And I pray for the young folks. I know school is about to get ready to start up again. I pray that they Remember the stuff that they learn here at church and that they're not influenced by the world because there are so many temptations out there, even for us adults. And I pray as parents that we stand on the truth and that we not waver when we discipline our kids because they will pay off in the end. And dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for all of our visitors here today. I pray that we show hospitality to them, and I pray that they come back. And all these blessings, I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd like to mark it again with the song of invitation, it'll be number 299. 299. That'll be the song after the lesson. And if you would, turn with me to number 286 for the song before the lesson this morning. 286. Yeah. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. If you would, please stand. <clears throat>
Good morning. It is so good to be with you all. Uh, for our visitors, we hope you will give us a few moments at the end of services uh, to get to, uh, to meet you and to welcome you here. Uh, you are definitely our honored guest. Um, for everyone that's here, we're just so glad to see you here. Some have been gone, some have been out sick, some have been on vacation, various things, uh, and we're missing still several this morning uh, that cannot be here with us uh, today. I don't normally do this, but uh, Antonio, I'm going to thank you for that prayer. That prayer meant a lot to me. Um, definitely s- struck some emotions. I had to wipe a few tears away by the end of it. And it actually speaks towards our lesson this morning. You know, when we came up with this theme for this year, about being together, God and his people. This was something that reached deep into my heart, and it's something that when I look into Scripture, I see was one of the things that God wanted for us. You know, we think about a lot of times the individual, and the individual Christian, yes, we have to have a proper relationship with our God, and we have to serve him how he says serve. We have to do those kind of things that he has told us to do, but... We are not just an individual. We are part of something. We've been added to something, those that are Christians, those that have obeyed Christ and been added by the Lord to his church. We've become part of something. And as his people, as his people, we have to be together. And there's so many things you can look into Scripture and see what we need to be together in, And today, I want to talk about one of those things. One same mind. We have to be together in mind. And even just looking at this idea of one same mind, there were so many things that we could look in the Scripture and see what we need to be the same mind about that we couldn't include them all into one lesson. So I chose five. I chose five things that Scripture speaks to that we need to be of the same mind about. And one of the first things I want to mention this morning is we need to be of the same mind, this one same mind, that there are no divisions among us. When you come to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting there in verse 10, he says, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So first I want us to see that we're supposed to be speaking the same thing. So we're going to be teaching and preaching and, you know, just helping other people to come to the knowledge of what? Of the scriptures, of the word of God. We're going to speak those same things. And there are, it goes on and says there are to be no divisions among us. But we're not going to be divided over doctrine. We're not going to be divided over truth. We're not going to be divided by matters of opinion. We are going to be people that are united and that fight for that unity day in and day out because first and foremost, we're going to speak the truth. And there is not not going to come any divisions among us because we're not going to let it. We're not going to let these divisions uh, be something that is coming in to the Lord's church. And it says that you may be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. We as the Lord's church need to be that one same mind and not let divisions come among us. Because as we're going to look here in Corinthians, this is what was happening to that church in Corinth. Going on down to verses 12 and 13 of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says, Now I say this, that each one of you says, I am a Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? This was a real problem that the church in the New Testament had. And I know a lot of times we speak about the church New Testament. We, we go to Acts 2, and I love going to Acts 2, and we talk about it from verses 42 to 47, and it seems like the church was just perfect. But the reality is, is they in the first century still had problems that they had to deal with. And one of those problems they had to deal with was division. 
And they were being divided. Well, I follow after Paul, or I follow after Peter, or I follow after Apollos, or I follow after Christ. And they're, they're letting these things get in the way, and they're not really seeing, they're not really seeing God, who he is, and they're not really seeing his church and how it's supposed to be. We are to be of one same mind if we want to be together, and we are not to allow divisions to come among us. In fact, when you go on down to chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, it's going to call that divisive attitude, that divisive mindset, it's going to call it by a word. It's going to say that it's carnal. He says, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. And so here, he's calling out this divisive mindset, something that is worldly, something that's focused on the flesh and the blood, something that is the here and the now and is not heaven bound. That is what he is calling this. He said, I fed you with milk and not with solid food for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able for you are still carnal. We cannot be carnally minded. We have to be of the same mind. That mind has to be in Christ and we cannot be divided. We need to think about these things as we think about the Lord's church, as we think about not only being this individual Christian, but being part of his church, we have to be in the same mind that there can be no divisions among you. When you keep on going down to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, going down to verses 16 and 17, it's going to point out a really big reason why. Why we can't allow divisions to come among us. And it says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone, it says, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are, referring to this church, referring to the church. We need to understand that we are the temple of God. We, we, and we better not dare defile it. There can be no divisions among us. We need to see this as the church. 1 Corinthians 1 17 says, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. See those, that divisive mindset, it's man-made. It comes from this carnal mindset we don't live that way, and we don't preach that way. We preach the words of God, and that is where we make our stand. We have to be of one mind. We have to have no division. But we also, have being in one mind, one same mind, we have to be one same mind of striving for the gospel. Notice it says there in 1 Corinthians 1.17 that it, they're not, weren't, they weren't preaching the words of men, but they're preaching about Christ. They're preaching about the gospel. They're preaching about this truth. And we need as people need to make sure that day in and day out that we are striving for the gospel, that that's our goal, that that's our aim, that that's our purpose and why we are here. And in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27 and 28, it says this, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. And we'll pause there. That the things we do day in and day out are going to show whether we are living worthy of that gospel or not. So that whether I come and see you or am absent. See, that's where true character is found, right? It's not just in what's happening when people see you, but even when you're absent or when they're absent. When no one's watching, who are you really? Who am I really? Are we striving for the gospel? Because if we're going to be of one same mind, the scripture says that we need to strive for this. He says that I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit and one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. That's what he wants to hear. But it's not just what he wants to hear. It's what he expects from his fellow brethren worldwide. That they're going to be constant. That they're going to be striving for the faith. That they're going to be putting up that good fight because they are of this one mind. That is what... We need to be as fellow Christians. Going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, it says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring you the testimony of God. 
For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's something that if you look on any of our, even our uh, Sawa logos, preaching Christ crucified, that's what we're all about. That's our purpose. That's our goal. That's what we're here for. We are here to declare the, the gospel of Jesus Christ to the entire world. And we need to let that sink into us and let that transform us how we're going to live, how we're going to act, how we're going to interact. Romans chapter 1 in verse 16 speaks to those interactions and really speaks to our entire life. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. We need to be people that we're striving for the faith. We're striving for the gospel, and we do so not being ashamed one bit that when people look at us, they see someone that's different. And that difference is, is that we are following Christ and that we are living that faithful kind of life. And so the same kind of charge that Paul gave to the Corinthian church is the same kind of charge we bring before you today. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13 says, Watch. Stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Because we as Christians, we need to be together in this. That one same mind that's going to stand strong in the faith. We need to know this as we read in Jude 3. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. The faith has been delivered. The gospel has been delivered. But we have to contend earnestly. We have to strive for that gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to strive for the faith. We need to be of one same mind in this. Another thing, that we need to be of one mind in is our humility. We need to be people that are humble day in and day out. And when I look into the world, I see that is a very hard thing to do at times. In fact, if I'm being honest, I have told you many times uh, again that worry probably is one of my greatest struggles that I have dealt with over and over again. Number two <laughs> is pride. Pride has been my downfall so many times. And pride shows its ugly self in so many ways because pride makes us feel like we're, we're better than everybody else. Pride makes us feel like, you know, that it's not my responsibility. Pride makes us feel like that, you know, that everyone needs to just be like me. Pride does so many ugly and terrible things to our lives. We as Christians, we have to be of one mind. We have to, in the same self, be able to recognize that I sin, that I need help, that I am part of a body, and that others matter too. We, with the same breath that we are confessing sins one or another, why? James chapter 5 talks about so that we can be healed. So that healing can take place, not only between us and God, but between us and our fellow brother, anyone that I've wronged, Matthew chapter 18. You know, I'm confessing from commandment, but I'm also confessing because I need healing. They need healing. I care about souls. You care about souls. In order to do that, in order to achieve that, I have to humble myself. I have to get over myself and be of the same mind with my brethren to let them know that I sin to let them know that I hurt for you to let us know that you hurt and to let us know that we are serving God as servants as just as Jesus was Romans chapter 12, verse 16 says, Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. And I think that's what happens, doesn't it? You know, we think we get pretty, you know, 
caught up on ourselves and think, hey, look at me. I'm the greatest. I have this wonderful idea. You probably do. I've had a couple of good ideas over the years, but I've had a lot of bad ones too. We need to be those humble servants. And I think the place we learn that from, the best example of this is learning this from Christ. Learning this from Christ himself. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, starting there in verse 1. And we're going to read several verses here because I think this is one of my favorite, I know this is one of my favorite passages, but I think it's one of the best passages for us to see and really understand this humility that we are to have within our lives. It says, therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any aff- affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. So we already see being like-minded is, is of great importance. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition. Notice, we're starting to make that turn. We're starting to make that turn. We're, we're going we're to get into this selfishness that sometimes plagues our heart, which is quickly associated with pride, through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Do we see where it came in? Being proud is being selfish. Being humble is being selfless. I'm going to care about others. Let each of you look not, on, not out, out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Do we know any examples of that? Do we know any person that stands for this throughout their entire life? Well, I think we know of one. As we continue going down to the same passage, starting there in verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. There's not much more you have to really say in regard to being in the same mind and being in the same mind in humility. For Christ sets the ultimate example for each and every one of us. And we just get to give some application here. Think about what that would do to the church. Think about that, what that would build up within the church. If each and every one of us, myself and all of you, if we all humbled ourselves daily to serve like Christ served. You know, he's the only Savior. He's the only Messiah. He's the only one that could die on the cross for sins but he is not the only one that can serve. And his humble, servant-like attitude teaches us daily how we are to be. And it's not just one of us. It's not just two of us. It's all of us. So that we can be together, God and his people. It is so very important for us to understand that we need to be humble. Now, within those passages, we read something that I think just stands out. It's actually where our scripture reading came this morning. And talking about how we show that humility and we show that love to one another. Because the other thing we need to be in the same mind about is showing compassion and love. And I know that the the first and the greatest uh, command, the the one we're going to love the most with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength is going to be our God, and we're going to love our neighbor as ourselves. But notice you see there within Mark 12, 29 to 31, you see that it's so important that we love. Yes, we love the Lord God with our everything. We love others. And when you think about the life of Christ, think about what he came and what he did. Count how many times in Scripture that it says that he had compassion on them. That he showed compassion on them. In fact, so many of his miracles, when he performed these miracles, he says that he had compassion on them. When he fed the 5,000, he showed compassion on them. When he made the healing, he compassion on them. In fact, I believe our ladies' uh, class 
just a, not too long ago, they did a study of the compassion of Christ. And so we have a wonderful example of this, but that's something that we don't just need an example of it. It sets a pattern for our lives. That we as the church, we must be of the same mind in loving one another. Loving God, but loving one another. And so 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9 says, Finally, all of you be of one mind. One mind of what? It says, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. As brothers. Now, I never got to meet my brother. He passed away before... Um, I was even born. I have a sister that I love dearly. And as you all know, she's struggling right now. She's battling cancer. I love her with my whole heart. But guess what? We fought sometimes. Sometimes we disagreed. Sometimes we had differences of opinion. We were able to push past all those things. I love her. And I love you. Do we see how we need to love one another even when times get tough? Even when things are not always easy? Even when times when I'm irritable, when maybe you're irritable, when we're having bad days, that through it all, we love one another as brethren. We need to see this and pattern this in our lives. It says, having compassion one for another, love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous, not returning evil to evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. We're called to a different way of life than the rest of the world. We are to be loving. And part of being loving is going to be like we see in Romans chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. You know, we're going, to, we're, going to bear with, we're going to bear with others. There are those that are weak. There are those that are strong. We're going, to, we're going to bear with those that are weak. We're going to be there for them. It says in verse 2 of Romans chapter 15, uh, it says, Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of those who are approached you fell on me. We need to understand that we as people, we need to show compassion and love. We need to bear with one another. We need to do like we read this morning, or Antonia read this morning. We need to to do these things and let them really sink into our life. I want to read these again. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be cottonly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another. Not lacking in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfast in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Those are things that we as a church, we need to do. But not only just do, those are things we need to be. Because those, those are the marks of a Christian. And those are the marks of a, of a church family that is striving to not only to be together with God, but to be together with one another. We as Christians, we need to show compassion and love and be of that mind. And lastly this morning, we need to be of the same mind to set our mind on heaven. It is so important. It is so important to hear now. It's so important how we're living. It's so important what we're doing. It's so important, you know, all these things and these opportunities we have, but let's don't think of them just as opportunities. And let's don't think of them as just the here and the now. See, everything that we are about, that we do, that we are, is preparing us and getting us ready for an eternal destination. And by the grace of God, we've been given access to a better destination. Not a better destination than anyone else has access to, because anyone that comes to the knowledge of Jesus Christ has access to him and access to heaven. 
but a better destination than the other alternative. Those two destinations being one being heaven and one being hell. Is our mind set on heaven? Is our mind set on that better place? Is it set on that eternal goal? Are we still caught up in the here and now? As the church, if we're going to be together as a people, we have to set our mind, be of one same mind. And our goal and our aim and our purpose and our everything is doing the will of God and being with him one day in heaven. We have to be heaven bound. And so, as Paul wrote to the church at Colossae, he says, if then you've been raised with Christ. So that's all that have been baptized into Christ. You're buried with him in baptism. You're rising to walk in newness of life. Romans chapter 6. So here we are. If then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. This is something that we need to be of the same mind about. That our life, that our purpose, that our everything, it's all about God. It's all about living for him. It's all about one day being with him in heaven. And so let us have the attitude like Paul had in Philippians chapter 3. I think Paul just describes this in such a beautiful and wonderful thing. And I think this is a great way to end this lesson today. Philippians chapter 3, starting there in verse 12. Not that I've already attained or I'm already perfected, because we're all still working. We're all still striving We're all still going to sin from time to time. We make sure that we repent and we come back to the the fold. We come back to God. But he says, I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, which that needs to be something we're striving for too, striving to be mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. I think it's so very important as we consider ourselves, as we consider the church, and as we consider our relationship with God, are we being, are we being that Christian we ought to be? Are we being his people? Are we serving God the way that we ought to? And if not, why? We already read in First Corinthians chapter 3, we're the temple of God. And we are not to defile that temple. We as the church, we must be of the same mind. And there are so many other things in Scripture that we could have mentioned this morning. But we need to be of the same mind in these things. And so, no division Strive for the gospel. Be humble. Show compassion and love. And set our mind on heaven. And if we will do these things, if we will follow his commands and be obedient to him, one day we will have that home with him forever. If there's anything we can do for you this morning, whether prayers to church or today you want to put on Christ in baptism, having your sins washed away, please do not wait another moment. Please come as we stand and as we sing.
33. We'll sing all three verses. Oh, we come to time in our worship where we gather together as believers to remember Christ and the sacrifice he made for each and every one of us. I want us to think about what it did for us as well. Let's go to 1 Peter 1. I'm going to read 3 through 5 if you'd like to just listen or if you'd like to follow along with me either way. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you and me who are kept by the power of God through the faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last day. Our salvation is grounded in God's mercy, what he did for us, his act of compassion toward us despite our condition of sinfulness has given us as believers a new spiritual life that enables us to live in an entirely different form, as Derek mentioned than the one that we have with our physical birth. We are given a living hope which gives us confidence that does not end with this life, but continues throughout eternity through the resurrection. As the Lord asks us to do, we're going to remember him today until the time that he comes back and takes us all home with him. As we remember the bread that represents his body, let us pray. 
Lord, we are so grateful for your mercy and what you have given us as believers, the opportunity through Jesus Christ, given himself on the cross to be, our, be the lamb, the perfect lamb in our place, Lord. Be with us as we partake of this bread that represents the body that was given for us as it was put on the cross for our sins. Let us take it in representation of him. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's continue in prayer. Lord, we are so mindful of what you do for us and thankful for Jesus and that sacrifice that he made for each and every one of us. And we know that without the pouring out of the blood, there would be no forgiveness. And for that, we are grateful. Let us take this fruit of the vine that represents that blood that was given for each and every one of us in a manner that is acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
separate and apart from the Lord's Supper as we have these men up front here. We're going to take up a collection for the church. And as I do so, pray with me. Lord, we're so grateful for everything you give us each and every day, and we know that you are the sustainer of our lives. We thank you for the work that goes on here at Sidewell Road and the work that we do in other countries to try to bring more souls to you. We're thankful for the monies that are given here, and I pray that as the eldership looks over that money, that they will use that money to spread your word throughout this community and throughout the world. Continue to bless us as we give, as we purpose in our heart first, give our first fruits to you, Lord, that we will do so with a cheerful heart. Continue to be with us this day and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, we're thankful for everyone for being here today, for taking the time to come and worship with us. We hope that you'll come back at 5.30 this evening when we have our evening service. Derek, we're thankful for the lesson that you gave today on the unity and being of sane mind. And we look at that concept that the world has today with denominations, and it's so against exactly what Jesus and the apostles taught for us to be of sane mind and be unified. Car, reminder that car care group number two, Alan Bates and, and John Mark Bridges, will meet this, this afternoon after evening service. Also, next Sunday, we're going to have our fellowship meal following the uh, morning service with, for in honor of Gary and Teresa and their 50 years of marriage. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer uh, that you can sign up for if you would like to bring a side item. The meat's going to be provided. And then... Uh, following again, following the morning service, we'll have the fellowship meal, and we will still have our 5:30 evening service. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer, also for salt. If you would like a T-shirt for salt, and uh, also another sheet there, if you're able to house anyone for the salt, uh, they're needing they're needing housing uh, availability. So please sign up for that because we know that there's going to be a number of children for that. If you will, please uh, stand, and we'll have our closing song, closing prayer. Number 619, 619, we'll sing the first and last verse. Come we that
you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now. We thank you for another day that you've given to us, Lord. And we thank you for this building that we can come to, that we can worship you without fear of persecution, Lord. And we pray for those around the world that are the members of your body that do have that fear of persecution, Lord. We ask that you would watch over them and be with them and help them to continue to serve in your kingdom. Lord, we thank you for the lesson that we've heard today. Lord, we thank you for your compassion. Lord, we thank you for your gift of free will. And Lord, we ask that you would continue to be with us as we strive to be humble every day. Lord, we ask that you would help us to continue to joyfully serve in your kingdom that we might bring souls to you. Lord, we pray for those that are struggling spiritually. We ask that you would help us to say something or do something that might bring them back to you. Lord, we uh, also ask that you would watch over our sick and help to return them back to their much needed health. Lord, we thank you for, most importantly, Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus and the salvation that we may obtain through that blood. We thank you so much for that sacrifice. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, and we pray that you would forgive us as we fail you. In Jesus' name, amen. Here.